Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Charlemagne, the guy. Yo, Bud, 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 Bud wanted to sit there. Hey, he Bud wanted to sit in your seat. Bud wanted to sit in your seat. And he said, if you want him to move, hey, you got to make a move. Hey, no, you got to sit right no, with you, no. man. He right, he right where he needs to be. He right where he needs to be. Bud said he want to sit in your seat. And if you want him to move, make a move. Hey, That's what he, he said. He right where he need to be. Ladies and gentlemen, Congratulations, we have the champion, thanks, thanks, Terrence thanks. Crawford, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Charlamagne, Congrats, man. would you like to say anything? Sure. I mean, I gave myself donkey of the day. Oh, I was, I apologize. Was di- <laughs> <laughs> he said apologize for the wrong sports and, and say, and say you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> say it all. Listen, I, 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 I don't know if an uh, apology is necessary, but I was dead wrong. Mm. Say you sorry for, for being dead wrong. <laughs> you gotta, I apologize. Okay. I apologize okay. for picking Earl Spence over you. He okay. picked Earl Spence way before. Way early did. on. I did. The, the most impressive thing about the fight was everything that I thought, uh, everything I thought Earl Spence, everything I thought Earl Spence would do to beat you, you neutralized it. Right. Like every single thing. Took away his jab. His size didn't matter. You were clearly stronger. You heard him. And I asked you, I said, how you feel that he's stronger than me? But I, that was before I saw the video. You deadlifting uh three. How much was that? Four hundred pounds? Like four something. Four something. I didn't know you. I really didn't know that you had that that type. He of slept stuff. on you, Terrence. Man, shut up. You only watch boxing. On you. I, I'm Knock a casual off. boxing fan. <laughs> I see that fight. Man. So, but let me let me ask you a question. I know it it it, it seemed like it felt good because it, you had so many doubters and so many haters, people that didn't believe in you. So, it, did you feel like that was your That's time? That's not true. He was the, 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 uh, he was up in Vegas. Could you let the, this brother talk? That's Vegas. Yeah, but in, in, in plenty of people. Did you, you feel like there was a lot of people that doubted you, hated on you, especially from the culture? Absolutely. You know, there was there there was a a lot of people doubting me and saying the same thing that he was saying mm-hmm. because I'm pretty sure he didn't base his opinion off of his own knowledge. Mm-hmm. He based his opinion off of what people were saying. Oh no, no, that was based off what I saw. So yeah, but yeah. you know, when you start seeing this and this and this and everybody keeps saying, oh, well, he's big, he's strong, and everybody keeps saying that, and then you see him fight, you know, then you're like, all right, well, this dude is big and strong, and so you start believing the hype, you know, so um, he didn't do his own homework, just like everybody else, so mm-hmm. then you get a lot of people in the comments, you get a lot of people, you know, uh, on on social media, you get a lot of people in interviews, they say, oh, well, Terrence Small, because I'm skinny, mm-hmm. or he's small, he's little, He's coming from 135, uh, and they go with that narrative, you know. And then when the fight happened, then everybody, they shocked, they Mm -hmm. surprised. They like, man, wow. But not giving me the credit for knocking out every opponent that I faced in the welterweight division. Was it an easy fight for you? I I wouldn't say it's easy because, you know, I trained so fucking hard for that fight, Mm -hmm. you know, and I put the work in. And uh, it may look easy on TV, but... There's a lot that goes into uh, fighting. I mean, you were screaming at other people in the ring in the middle of your fight. Like, it, it you were just, screaming at Jamel Charlo, man. Charlo, he was yeah. screaming at other people too. It was you, you. just seemed like you knew you had this from the door. Oh yeah, definitely. I was in my moment, you know. And like I said, I'm gonna embrace it. I'm gonna live in it, and I'm gonna, you know, capture it. You have I, to admit this was your best performance ever in the ring. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. You know, I would say it's my best performance against the level of competition that it was because mm-hmm. I feel I had a lot of great performances that I was slept on you know a lot of people say oh well he looked good in that fight but this guy they just always discredit me mm-hmm. you know for my performances all right well this guy was this or this guy was that or that guy wasn't on his level so given the performance that I had against a, a level of competitor like Errol Spence then that's when everybody uh, give me my respect now. So is this a revenge tour? Are you just going to go around to all the media outlets who said that uh, Earl... <laughs> he should. <laughs> that Earl was going to win and make him apologize? That's what you... Nah, man, I just want to, you know what I mean, see your face because <laughs> you was one of the main people, you know, mm-hmm. not the last time, but way when I first came on here. Like I've, been, I've, I've always thought Earl... Oh, not, mm-hmm. not, not discrediting you in any way, just saying I always thought Earl would win if y'all 
fought each other. Yeah, so I just had to see your face, you know, sit in your chair and you know, <laughs> make you appreciate greatness that's sitting next to you. Now, now, let me How's ask life you. been since the fight, though? Oh, it's been cool. It's Do you been feel like you're a household name now, boxing wise? I feel like I, 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 I am. Mm-hmm. I became that in that one night, but I should have been, you know, where I am now. Uh, mm-hmm. But things happen for a reason. Uh, some things I just wouldn't change, mm-hmm. but some things I would change. But you know, I'm just happy and blessed that I'm able to, you know, get to this point where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Well, the rematch happens sooner or later, and. I mean, I know you, you, you've heard the commentary after the fight, even like Stephen A. Smith believes Errol should retire. What's your thoughts after fighting him, you know? Well, I don't think he should retire. I think he should t- take a little time off, you know, get his, get his mind right and, you know, get back in the gym and get back focused because, you know, I never took a loss in the professional uh, rankings, but I know how, how that can affect you mentally, you know, being at this high level and losing the way you lost, you know, you start questioning yourself. You start asking yourself certain questions. Do I still got it? Am I am I getting old? Am I slipping? You start asking yourself all different type of questions that you got to answer. So I just, you know, would tell him, you know, you're a great fighter. Take, take a little time off and come back and, you know, uh, do it again. But don't Have you spoke it. to him? Have you spoke to him after? No, I send him a text message. Mm-hmm. Send him a text message. Check up on him. Did he reply? I mean? Yeah, he replied. You know, like I like I told everybody, I don't hate Errol Spence. Like I'm a fan of Errol Spence. Like mm-hmm. you know, uh, it was just business at the end of the day. I, I know he has a rematch clause, but if it was up to you, like you, if, if you had mm-hmm. to pick whether or not he got a rematch, would you want him to have a rematch? Would you give him a rematch? Of course, mm-hmm. of course. You know, because I felt like he was a big factor in this fight getting made. Mm -hmm. Like I told, like I said, you know, without him, you know, um, well, both of us coming together, you know, uh, and we was to leave everything to our handlers and and promoters and and advisors, managers, this fight would never happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was me and Errol Spence like, all right, you want this? All right, cool. You want that? All right, cool. I'm cool with this. You cool with that, you know? And us two putting our pride to the side and just coming together and making this event happen. Mm-hmm. What are some things about the your, your newfound fame that you don't like? I haven't got to that point yet. Mm-hmm. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still chill. Mm-hmm. I still do the same thing mm-hmm. that I've been doing mm-hmm. before the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I still uh, do the same routine. I don't, I ain't changed up nothing. I ain't on a high horse. I don't feel like. I'm something different just because I want to fight. So mm-hmm. nothing has really changed for me. Why do you think people doubted you the way that they did? Like I, I looked at. Why do you keep saying? I'm that? saying it because a lot of people did. It wasn't that type. It wasn't it was, that level of doubt in no way, shape, or no. It wasn't. A lot of people did. No, but I was going to even like you know even listening to Shakur Stevenson right and him him saying that he thought he was great. He thought he was the nicest until he fought you. And then when after he said he sparred with you, he was like, damn, there's a lot that I need to work on. Mm-hmm. Why do people feel that way? Uh. When they in the ring with me, mm-hmm. I just think, you know, my uh, experience, you know, my level of competition that I've faced uh, that led me to, you know, overcome adversity. You know, uh, when I'm in the ring, I'm a thinking man. So you can be more athletic than me. You can be faster than me. You can be stronger than me. You can be uh, more powerful, but I'm going to find a way to get the advantage over you mm-hmm. because I'm out think you. Uh, boxing is a thinking man's sport, so uh, the number one thing that I have over a lot of fighters is uh, my mind, the way I think, the way I capitalize on your mistakes, the way that when you do something wrong, you know, I, I recognize it and I make you pay. You know, so um, when, I'm, when I'm in there with Shakur, you know, it's a it's it's just chess match, mm-hmm. you know, because Shakur is a thinking man as well. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely a chess match, and you know, uh, that's something that you know I love, he loved because now we got to be creative. Mm-hmm. We got to be, you know, we got to go in that bag and be like, man, I can't do this with him because it's not gonna work. So now I gotta get more creative to to get a little advantage on over him because mm-hmm. we both competitive. 
neither one of us want to let the other one get anything off. So, you know, that's probably what he's alluding to. Did you carry Earl a couple of rounds, man? No, Earl, Earl. I feel like you could have got, and I, lo- I love Earl, but I feel like you could have got him out there a little bit earlier. It looked like you, you let off, especially in the eighth round. No, man, you got to understand, man. Earl's a, you know, a, a great fighter. He's very strong. He's He's got the heart of a lion, and, you know, he's, he, He's very tough, mm-hmm. you know. He just keep getting up. Like he, getting up, yeah. he like, man, I'm not giving up. I don't care what you do. I'm gonna keep getting up, and I'm gonna keep fighting. So, you know, uh, yeah, he did what he had to do to uh, last the uh, the time that he lasted. You think the ref should have stopped it? Yes, the ref did stop it. Right. Yeah. But, no, I think, but you think he should have stopped it at that time? Because even when yes. he stopped it, Arrow was you know put his hands up like I'm I'm still going. Do you no. think that was the time to stop the fight? Oh yeah, for sure. But I think that his 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 corner should have stepped in in the seventh round. You know, I feel as if you know uh, they believed in Arrow, but at the same time they should have saved the fighter from himself. Because this fighters, we gonna keep fighting until there's no fight left. Mm-hmm. But at the point where you know, they see that there's no possible way for him to win. Uh, now they banking on something lucky, knockout, something dramatic to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, that can cause for serious damage and uh, one to get hurt in a way where they can't come back from. Were you concerned about that? Because there, there's been these rumors that you know, neurologically something is off with, with Earl. So were you concerned about that as you were fighting him? Like, did you see any of that in the ring? No, nah, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Not, not at all, you know, because when I'm in the ring, I'm, I'm in kill mode, you know. Uh, it's not my job to let up, you know. It's my job to, to hurt you, mm-hmm. because we're in a hurt game. And if I was in that situation, he would be thinking the same. Now afterwards, yeah, I'm gonna be like, damn, you know, I'm feel sorry for you. I'm check up on you because at the end of the day, we all doing it for the same reason, to take care of our family mm-hmm. and provide for, you know, our little ones. Uh, he got a beautiful family that I would never want to take him away from, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, wish him well. And, you know, that's pretty much how it go. Right. So what you going to do next? Because Jamel Charlo is getting a script of his belts. And I know you wanted that to become, what, three, three undisputed champion in three divisions, right? Right. So... If, when that happens, what you gonna do? Who you wanna fight now? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting back, exploring my options. Is Jamel off the table for good if you don't have the belt? No, no, not at all. Mm-hmm. I hope he come back and him and Tim Zoo fight and I fight the winner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I really, you know, I want to fight him. So, so, so with that is that the end game? Like, let me get these, get the belts, become the undisputed champion in this division, and then that's it. Could be. What he- about Boots? Boots? Boots is the mandatory. He's calling you out now. I don't have, listen, right now in my career, a lot of people like boost this, boost that, boost Mm -hmm. this, you know. um, Fighting boost is a lose-lose situation, Mm -hmm. you know. um, I win, they're going to say, oh, well, he was young, he wasn't ready. You know, uh, he was talented, he was skillful, but you you got the experience over him. You got, you know, um, so much more than this kid that, that never been tested before, mm-hmm. you know, because we always seen them win and f- fly in color, uh, a fashionate way, mm-hmm. you know, to where we say, oh man, he's cold, he's skillful, but he's never been in the ring with nobody to test him. Mm-hmm. So um, me fighting Boots would be like, okay, well, you beat Boots. It's not a mega fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to sell a little bit because your name is what you just accomplished, mm-hmm. you know, but now what? I'm looking for big challenges. You know, I'm trying to go up and wait and fight Charlo, mm-hmm. you know, cause that's, that's something that's history in the making. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot at stake. You know, there's nothing really at stake with fighting boots. You know, I'm at the tail end of my career and I'm trying to make things make sense. So is not, it about just no the money? Definitely, okay, one hundred percent about the money. Mm-hmm. Not taking anything away from Boots, but you know where I am at in my career right now. I didn't fall my ass off to get to where I am, mm-hmm. and I deserve to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what nobody say, what nobody how how anybody feel. 
or or any of that. You know, fuck them. Do you see the comparisons when they say uh, Crawford in his prime versus Mayweather in his prime? Who would win? And what do you think about those comparisons? Well, yeah, man, I I respect it. I respect it. A lot of people always, uh, well, Ben asks me, you know, what I think, and I always say, you know, Terrence Crawford against anybody. You know, I'm not gonna say one man would would do anything with me, but I respect the hell out of Floyd. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been a fighter that I've looked up to his whole career, mm-hmm. ever since I was a little kid, you know, and uh, he paved the way for a lot of us fighters. So I got to always pay homage to the OG, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's great that my name has been mentioned with, with the greats mm-hmm. now at the welterweight division like Floyd, Sugar Ray Leonard, and, you know, Duran and Tommy Hearns and those those fighters, so I'm getting my just due. What media personalities motivated you for the Earl fight? Like, 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 who were the people that you couldn't wait to to go see other than me? <laughs> oh, I man. saw you call the guy retarded at the end of the fight. Oh man, <laughs> hey, listen. Fight, like. listen, man, there's so many of them because you know you got you got these these bandwagon people that's jumping on the bandwagon and no disrespect to to arrow no disrespect for them having their own opinion Mm -hmm. you know but if you in the the boxing game and you you covering boxing as a whole you know you should just be neutral Mm -hmm. let's clean up the sport let's call it how it is let's not just call it because you like this one fighter and you know you you don't like this other fighter because he won't give you an interview because you biased you know, call it how it is, you know, be neutral. And, you know, I think that's what the sport needs because there's a lot of casual fans that really don't know nothing about boxing. Mm-hmm. They just watch boxing just to, you know, get some excitement and entertainment. And you putting out false information or you misleading them. And then that's where a lot of, you know, uh, things happen and then, you be like, man, you don't know what you're talking about because you're just saying what you heard, mm-hmm. and what you heard is false. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot of, you know, uh, boxing little podcasts and blogs that mm-hmm. always put out negative in- information of Terrence Crawford, you know, just because they was Errol Spence fans. And I, you know, I fed off of that, though. But you and Errol was a pick-me, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you could have you could have went either way. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It can it it becomes, you know, it can be a pick me, you know. Call it call it how you call it. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, don't discredit one fighter because you like another fighter. You so you're saying. trying to take yeah. all away all his accolades away because you like this fighter. Mm-hmm. You're trying to put false information out on this fighter because you want to you know, get this fighter all the the attention and all the recognition and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, hey, this fighter, I think, you know, he got the edge because of this. Mm-hmm. But this fighter is a great fighter as well because mm-hmm. he accomplished this. Don't say, oh, well, he's not fighting nobody. He He's fighting washed up opponents. Oh, the only reason why he beat this guy is because, you know, he was damaged good because Errol Spence already beat him and this mm-hmm. and that and that. You know, there's no need to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when when me and Arrow fight, then we're gonna see who the better man wa- is, and that's what we did on the twenty nine. Well, what, you- what you did to Earl, though, I didn't I didn't expect Earl that I didn't expect Earl to do that to you, but I didn't expect you to do that to Earl either. Right. I don't think nobody expected what we saw yeah. that night. A lot of people say that. You know, a lot of people say the same thing that you say. Mm-hmm. Nobody expected it. You know, that's what's so great about it. Did you expect that? Did you expect did you in, not in at your all. mind when you envisioned the fight, did you think it was gonna go that way? Not at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. I didn't I didn't even expect it to go high win. But we train for the moments. Mm-hmm. You know, we live in the moments. When they ask me, you know, about the fight, I always say when I win, because I believe in myself, when I become undisputed. You know, it wasn't no second guessing, it wasn't no uh thinking. I was telling people when I win, mm. when I become undisputed, mm. because I really believe that and I really feed off of the negative energy, the negative attention, the negative comments, the non-believers, 
you know, the people that said I was too small, the people that said I wasn't going to be able to, you know, stand his body shots and and so forth. So I fed off of that. So when I was in training and I'm tired and I'm, I'm, I don't want to do it no more, I, I think of all them comments. I think mm-hmm. about the people that's in the comments that really don't mean nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I go looking under my pictures and everybody, oh, man, you scared to fight Errol Spence, you this, you that. So I replay all that in my head, mm-hmm. and I just, you know, it just boosts me and give me more energy, and I'm like, okay. Didn't I say that? I said every time he hit Earl, it felt like he was hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. And you know, it felt personal. It did. It felt like you was getting something off your chest in that moment. Oh, yeah, for sure. Man, that was definitely a fight where, you know, like I said, after the fight, I felt relieved because now mm-hmm. it's behind me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when I got my my kids asking me, "You gonna fight that Spencer guy?" Mm-hmm. You know, then I know it it, it hit home. Mm-hmm. So it's like, man, this dude gotta fight. So I always try to do everything in my power and in my will to make the fight happen. Mm-hmm. And the media blame me. Out of all people, mm-hmm. they always blame me. Oh, Terrence Crawford don't want to make the fight. Terrence Crawford ducking, Terrence Crawford this, Terrence Crawford that. But it never was Errol Spence. Mm-hmm. It never was, you know, uh, PBC. It was always Terrence Crawford top rank, Terrence Crawford top rank. So by default, I was I was always the blame. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once the fight got made, you know, I was just like, finally. Now we get to show the world, you know, what they've been waiting on. Mm-hmm. And it was great because it was for all the belts. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I told everybody it's at, it's happening at the best time. Mm-hmm. Because if we would have fought sooner, it probably wouldn't have been as big. It probably wouldn't have meant as much because we was fighting for two belts. You know, so now what? Where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. You know, do we fight this guy? Do we fight mm-hmm. that guy? Now what? I mean, everybody, everybody keeps bringing up Canelo. I, I think that's weird, you know, because you'd have to gain, like, what, 20 pounds? Yeah. But they, they say that's the money fight. That's the right. mega fight. That's the money fight. That's the only thing that makes sense for Terrence Crawford. Well, you know what I mean? Catch weight. We, mm-hmm. can, we can do something out of catch weight. What weight you think? Probably, like, 160 or something. But you said, well, you, you said 154 is the highest you want to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. 158. Mm-hmm. 160, that'd be cool. Also, I, I see... Uh, what was that conversation when you called Eminem to have Eminem bring you out? Cause that was a surprise to people. That was dope. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I was, I was just talking about, you know, um, what should I come out to? Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking of all artists, and every song that I come out to got meaning to it mm-hmm. for 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 that for that moment when I'm fighting. And um, I was just thinking, I was like, dang man, you know it'd be dope. Eminem, I don't think he never walked nobody out. Mm-hmm. He don't really never go nobody. Yeah, he never, he never yeah, go outside, right? Yeah. So I was just like, man, that would be great for this great moment, mm-hmm. you know, and for him to reply on my Instagram and 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 say that he was a big fan. I was one of his favorite fighters. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, you get surprised and stuff like that when. You're a fan of somebody and they're a fan of yours, mm-hmm. but you don't know they're a fan of yours. And mm-hmm. you're like, damn, word, mm-hmm. all right, mm-hmm. pull up. Mm-hmm. Like, he really pulled up. Yeah, you told him to pull up and he pulled up. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, let's do it. I'm like, damn, this is dope. So, like, everything leading up to the fight, you know, I felt as if it was my moment. You know, uh, I'm normally a, you know, laid back type of dude, calm, cool, collective. You know, but when I when I went on that stage for the weigh-ins, I felt like it was my show. Mm. You know, I'm like, I'm here. Yeah, the little weigh-in plan. Yeah, I'm here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it took so long for me to get here, but the energy that that I felt in that moment, I'm like, this is my show. Mm. I'm taking over. There's nothing he can do to stop me. And I just felt that way in my heart, my soul, like, this this my show. It can say Spence Crawford. He can be the A side, but this my show. Mm-hmm. Do the local rappers from Omaha get upset? Like, oh, man, why you ain't bring one of us out? <laughs> nah, know? everybody always asks that, but you know what I mean. Like I be telling them, like, 
the Eminem song, dog. The song, the song pick me. I don't ever mm-hmm. pick the song. Mm-hmm. Like I be in the gym, and you know I listen to a variety of music. I mean, mm-hmm. from country to to gospel to rap to R and B, all different type of music, jazz, and I put it on shuffle, and I hear a song, and I be like, dang. That's the song. Mm-hmm. They be like, "What?" I'm like, "I'm coming out to that." Look at, you know, what I mean, imagine Terrence Crawford walking out to a gospel song and then beating your ass. <laughs> beating your ass, right? <laughs> How would that feel? Hey, it is what it is. We it stomp. Ain't, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't the song. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's the individual. You know, so uh, a lot of people always let me walk you out. I'm like, what you gonna What you gonna uh, walk me out to? I'm like, no, nah, that don't fit the bill. You know, you talking too much about. Robbing, stealing, killing, mm-hmm. and shooting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they ain't, they ain't what I'm standing for right now. Can- Canelo versus Charlo, September 30th. Who you got? I got Canelo. I think it's going to be a good fight. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Charlo, but he's skillful. He's big. He's, he's, he's bigger than Canelo, even though Canelo at a higher weight. I think Canelo going to be stronger than him. I think Canelo going to be more powerful than him, but at the same time, I think Charlo got the boxing skill, skills to make it a uh, competitive fight. Mm-hmm. You know, he uses jab, straight punches, and don't get caught up with all the uh, the feints and stuff that Canelo throw. I think it, it'd be competitive. Canelo versus Crawford at 158. Who wins? Crawford, come on, man. Don't, hey, listen. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Charlo, man? <laughs> what do you think? Hey, man, you want to make a prediction know. again? That's one of them ones where I'm just going to sit back and watch it. And we already had that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come back to get you again. <laughs> One fifty-eight. That's that's the fight, though. Right. Like that's the fight. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I don't. I can't see. There's nobody else out there for you. I can't see any. When we talking mega fights, mm-hmm. and you know where you are now, I don't see who else. Who else would would make sense? Yeah. Has yeah. there been talks? Has the, has the conversation nah, started? No, nah, nah. nah, you know they they already focused on what they got in front of them. That's Jamel. Mm-hmm. So I would never, you know, try to interfere. Or, what they got going on right now. Mm-hmm. How many more fights you think you got left? If you had to guess, you'd be what? Uh, you'd be about to be 37, 36? 36. 36, okay. Two, three? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm healthy as could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm healthy as could be, man. I, I probably can fight till I'm like 45. Yeah, but at the same time, I always said I want to retire at 33. Mm-hmm. I always said I want to retire from boxing. I never wanted boxing to retire me. Mm-hmm. You know, so... um always looked at all the old fighters and you know felt bad because a lot of them made a lot of money a lot of money they was great you know but we walking in the same room Mm -hmm. nobody noticed them Mm -hmm. you know they talking with slur and they really can't hold a conversation with you Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. of the damage that they accumulated in boxing and i'm like man i never want to be like that i want to be able to enjoy my fruits from my hard labor. I want to be able to go outside and play basketball with my kid. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to, you know, tell my story without somebody else telling it because I can't speak. You know, so uh, yeah, boxing has definitely been good to me, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna retire on top. How do you how do you not lead with ego? Like if you hear somebody like Tank say, "147, I knock butt out." Well, he just he just talking, mm-hmm. you know. He he got the confidence in himself that he believe that he can do that because he's been knocking all these fighters out mm-hmm. that he's been in the ring with, you know. So um, no knock to to Tank, but there's definitely levels, mm-hmm. you know. And if he come up to 147 and he's thinking he's just gonna knock Terrence Crawford out. Got another thing coming. So that's the fight you would make happen if he if he wanted to come up to one forty seven. Yeah, I'll stay at one forty seven for him. That's a big money. That's fight. a big fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah. big money fight. You know. Um, yeah. So Spence. But then what? Everybody gonna say he was too small. Nobody gonna give me credit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're gonna say, "Oh man, you beat up a little guy that's fight at one thirty five. You know. Yeah, tank, tank like five five. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a little guy. You know, uh, yeah, he can punch, mm-hmm. but in his weight class, not saying that he can't punch in any weight class because 
he 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 punch punch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we see that you know but what type of recognition I'm gonna get for you know beating up on Tank mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know 135 and 147 is a big jump mm-hmm. you know that's almost 20 pounds mm-hmm. well 20 22 12 12 12 mm-hmm. Yeah, 12, 12, yeah. 12 pounds, you know, so that's a big jump. So for you, it's all about legacy and money at this point? 100%. Not too my much legacy, for you? My legacy is already set in stone. Yeah. You know, before, when you, when, you, when you look at my career, I was already, you know, going to the Hall of Fame without spins. Without spins. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm already flying in the sunset. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that I didn't accomplish yet. Is is the Hall of Fame? Mm-hmm. There's nothing in boxing that Terence Crawford haven't accomplished. Yeah, I mean, you made history. Was you undisputed two division champion? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about without spans. Yeah, yeah, you know. So now that that fight have happened, and now that I made history again, you know, now what? It's about the money, man. Is Earl is Spence right. is Spence Crawford to a mega fight? I don't know if that's a mega fight anymore. But that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is, man. We're going we to figure it out. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we it, we is going to do. Mm-hmm. We're going to figure it out. And if not, then, you know, it is what it is. I had, I had my moment. So what are you doing for the next months? How are you spending your time? Oh, man, I'm just chilling, man, with mm-hmm. my family. You know, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to go on a little vacation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it. I don't really do too much. You know, mm-hmm. try to take a fishing trip. I love to fish. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna try to go deep sea fishing or something like that. Mm-hmm. Wait on Canelo at 158. Right. That's the fight. All right. Canelo Crawford 158 or Crawford Canelo. I don't. You know, 158. That's right. the fight. Who you got, Red? <laughs> yeah. right. 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 I'm just gonna sit back oh, and now observe. Now you shut up. Now man. you shut up. I'm gonna right. sit back and observe. Well, we'll right. see next time he comes. He's probably gonna take your chair again. It's That's the only it. person the to take it. The champ can sit in the chair. <laughs> the champ can sit in the chair. For sure. For sure. Well, I appreciate you for coming and joining us. Appreciate you so much. I still offered you. I ain't got thirty million dollars, but if you if you take a little extra, you just want to man. Why would he, why check would he one punch time. somebody for free? At <laughs> just this check point. one that time. Makes no sense at this one point. time, it just why? might be gratification. One what? time, you know. He's the champ. He, he he's the guy. Like, right. We know this already. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Terrence Crawford. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you, brother. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs>